The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento. My pleasure to be here. I'm usually, my time of course is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 11 o'clock till noon, Eastern Time. And I'm usually, um, Larry follows me straight afterwards and he's not able to make it today, so I'm sitting in for him. And I, I, it's kind of timely that when I was asked if I would do it, I said, wow, that's great because I have... I have charts that I'd like to discuss based on the Chapman Wave methodology, maybe for people who have not not seen my charts before. If you're looking at Tiger TV, you'll see them right now. What I have, well, first of all, the Dow is up 45, S&P is down $1.47. Comp index, which is the NASDAQ, um, the broader composite index, is down 6.5. It's been improving all day, actually, um, at 28.56. And you've got bonds, well, you've got gold up, uh, the GLD is up $1.93 at $155.47. Gold's up $24, um, $24 $25 at $1,600. And silver is up $46 at $27.27. High grade copper is only up two cents at $3.37. Not good. And you've got the dollar having made, I uh, possibly making a peak D here in my, in my work. I'll, I'll explain it in a moment. And you've got bonds, well, crude oil also is down. Crude oil is at, uh, 87.16 down, dollar 34, and th these are continuous contracts. The continuous contract of um, bonds is down a half a point at 152.14 30 seconds. So let's just look at this. We're looking at the euro, the EUR USD. That's the currency pair, having made in the Chapman wave from the low of one uh, back in November of 2005. This is the easy way to look at these these charts. Um, when you go to a low bar, and you, I can identify this as an important low bar, from that moment on, if you count each successively higher peak in the Chapman wave, if the technicals confirm, or the chart pattern confirms, or if it's holding the nine period exponential moving average, in this case the nine month moving average, you should go to at least, it should go to a peak A, B, C, and even a D. And that's exactly what happened. At 1.163 uh, low, Back in November of 2005, the euro-dollar currency pair, and of course, the, the composite is made up of many, many currencies, went to a peak B uh, with a doji on the candle on the June of 2006. Peak C, the doji, a beautiful doji candle on December of 06, pulls back to the line period moving average, goes to D, and that D is at 1.368. April of 2007, and then it does something. In the Chapman wave, it's called an instant restart. If one can, if you develop this technique and you can use this technique, it tells you that not only will you go to a peak E and F if there's a parallel wave count, you can have an entirely new four peaks to the upside. It can keep you in a trade forever. That's how we were able to stay in our our trade on the downside for one, one of the stocks that we were short in the restaurant area for a 20% to 25% gain because I use the, 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 the technicals to tell me that this is a, a core holding and you can hold it as a core holding because it would not be able to go up when the market rallied significantly and it couldn't. And in this case, whenever the market came down, this particular tradable, the EUR-USD currency pair, held the 9 EMA and it went to a fourth higher P, highest, highest peak at in July of 2008 at 1.603. Then it plunges down because the stochastic was giving a, a deep, it was not confirming the rally. It was failing, still above 80%, but the fast moving average, that yellow line that you can see if you're looking at Tiger TV, this is a, daily, a monthly chart, I'll just stretch it out a little bit more, was making, uh, it was failing. And when the two come together and that fast moving average crosses down with a wide beta, that's a wide distance between the fast moving average, the nine period differential, and the slow moving average, that's, that is the big, the long term says be careful. Well, it plunges down to 1.23, starts another move to the upside, fails at a peak C minus. That's usually not good. It says if you fail only at three peaks or four peaks, or two peaks or three peaks, 
and you break down, you're going to probably retest the lows. Well, it does. It goes to 1.8756 with a doji candle of June of 2010. Then it rallies again, peak A, peak B, and then fails. That should be a B minus because it failed. And that is these patterns I talk about in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. And there I talk about the H pattern. I, I'll show that in bonds in a, sh in a short while. That's a down line. It's usually, a, some, this is a straight line. Sometimes it's at an angle. And then it arches over, retests the low, then makes another arch. And that arch, if it breaks significantly below the previous troughs of importance, that's not good because it says you're probably going to go lower. Where would it go to? Well, the low would be 1.6380. Well, sorry, let's go one at a time. It would be 1.8755 would be the most important next low to test. And I've got a left side, right side price time match, which says that could happen by um, October of this coming year. Any time before then it could happen. Huh. So, okay. So now what we look at is just in the shorter term, we've got a candle that's forming here that says, you know what? The weekly chart has made a lower low in the stochastic. The MACD is turning down. There's no sign of a turnaround in the MACD, but there is a little bit of a turnaround occurring in the in the weekly chart. And it says, you know what? The daily chart has just an opportunity here. If it can close above at 1.213 right now, if it can close above 1.22, it could actually get to the 1.24 area. That would be a counter trend rally, and that would give a nice bounce in the stock market probably. But if it fails to do that by Thursday afternoon, fr uh, f uh, sorry, Friday afternoon, Monday morning, if it fails to do that, then the euro is kind of uh, that nine period moving average in both the daily and the weekly are just such strong resistance at 1.218 that it could repel the price and push it even lower. And it would say, we're going to get to those levels even quicker. So I just wanted to go through that and just discuss it in terms of the waveform and what I look at. Uh, that's number one. Number two is, um, uh, yes, the questions in the den. Uh, and Ken from Philly had, uh, had a very, very um, astute observation. Wow, Larry, your voice sounds so different, almost like Basil's. Uh, you want any new medications? <laughs> that was a good one. Okay, Nancy wants to know about Apple. So we're going to look at some stocks in a moment. What I want you to do is just to go through a couple of what I consider to be really important pieces of information that I'm trying to put together in the puzzle. The DXY, which is the dollar index, is making a peak D if it doesn't take out 64.10 from yesterday. This thing, MACD is good, not great, it's good and it says there could be limited upside at this particular point unless the stochastic, which is at 83%, can move towards the 86 to 87% area. Hold the nine period moving average, just a little bit tired uh, in the very short term, but nothing very negative other than it's broken out from the 83.54 high back at peak E on the 1st of June, pulled back to trough C, started a brand new move, A, B, C, in, in a... It's, it's like a V, but I'll call it a cup formation just for ease of visual ease. And that cup formation made the cup. And then you remember the handle that I talk about, not my favorite pattern, right there. And it's broken out. And that cup and handle, rather than the cup and ladle, which were just powered right through 83.54 into the 84.20s, hasn't done that. And that says the dollar could start a digestive phase right here. Well, a digestive phase, that, that surely could help the market. Now let's go deeper than this. The monthly chart is in leg D. This is the first four legs to the upside that the dollar's been able to make since, I'm pulling this chart back, since October of 2000, when it was on its high to a peak E top at 121.00 with a double top, Chapman wave, drop bucket or double top pattern and then it came down and broke down in left side right side price time match so now this rally sounds great but i you know what i believe and i'm going to say it again i believe that the government is in fact still wanting to weaken the dollar because that's the way we can get this currency favor, favor this this 
favorable impact on international earnings for our stocks. And the dollar really has been, ra- it's actually had, its, it's in third gear, but it doesn't get traction because it's on a slippery surface. Because to have four peaks and still only go from 72.70 to the high of 84.10, way underneath the previous highs of 88.71 and 89, was it 89.62 back in March of 2009, and they made it in leg C- minus and a leg A, or D if you want to call it that. that, that that's just a pathetic move. When you've got the technicals and everything helping you. So all I can say is that the dollar should be much higher. It is not higher. My suspicions are that there's still government intervention. And now we've got to be a little careful on the dollar. And this is going to be fascinating. Because if the little doji, potential doji that's forming in the euro, EUR, USD, and the dollar candle by Friday at 4 o'clock, if this does become a doji and all of next week, the dollar doesn't make a new recovery high above 84.10. We might see the dollar pull back, the euro rally. We could have a counter trend rally in the market. You've just had Caterpillar and Boeing give good earnings. So it could be very selective, but a bounce, a pretty strong bounce nevertheless. Okay, let's say, whoa, let's look at the TLT. Because the TLT made a new recovery high in leg E in the, in the daily. This is the middle chart. So if you're looking at my charts, the left side is always the daily. The middle one is the weekly. The right side is the monthly. And the monthly TLT is in leg C. That says I do not have a sell signal. The MACD stochastic are very strong. The TLT is going higher even if in the entire August has a pullback in the TLT. There should still be a leg D to the upside in September. But if there's a new high in the first week of, of August, you don't get a peak until... Two months later, can you get a peak? So this is still very positive for the TLT. That's the Lehman 20-year T-bond front. If I look at the U.S. dollar, very long term, that powerful move up has broken the 21-year up channel. It's a 30, 31-year uh, bull market, but a 21-year up channel. And it's the nine-period exponential moving average is at 143, and that's at 152 right now, 52 and a half. It's a con- continuous contract. So I oh, just needed to get those out the way. One of my high-grade copper will do that, and then we're going to go to um, questions in the den. If I can just get back to them over there. There you are. Uh, yes. Okay. So high-grade copper has the potential. I, I'm going to this – is, this is that pattern that I call the H pattern, the little M forming there. If high-grade copper – in the next three to five sessions, takes out 3.25. It's telling me that we're going to be retesting the low of uh, 3.09 back in October. That's the continue. That's the HGU contract. That's September contract. So I just wanted to cover those, and then we can go to the questions. We had some stock questions I wanted to look at. I thought I looked at Apple a little earlier. We'll look at Apple again. I had a question about. Uh, uh, I'll go through the questions in the den. And I'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Be right back. Sebastian Chappers. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation Location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney Financial Advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, First Vice President and Certified Financial Planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. Just before we go to some of those stocks that were, that, that were asked about, um, I, I needed just to look at something that has been very important, very important, I think, for this country, and that is crude oil. Ah, crude oil. It is, it is crude oil, but it is corn, December corn. Recycled higher, it is making a potential peak E, and it made an E top, but it's holding the nine period exponential moving average. The weekly chart is just spectacular. It's gone from uh, 4.99 to 7.91. Um, so, when I'm looking at my 120-minute chart, there's just a real good chance this 800 level that was hit, this is the December contract, if, in fact, the, it takes out 800, well, no, if it goes above 796 in the 120-minute chart, in this hour it extends leg B. If it does it in the next hour, that'll be leg C. And that 800 level will be a resistance. But I do have a buy signal in the 120 minute chart. Oh, above 800. This is incredible. I mean, you, you know, when you talk about crops, the, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know how to replace it. I don't, know, I don't know anything about this. All I know is that it must, from what I hear, it must be devastating because so big deal. You're selling your corn for the highest price you've ever sold it, except you have a fifth or less 
of the corn you'd normally sell. It's not good. And, and what about replacing it? So this is just, Larry, I'm sure we'll deal with in greater detail tomorrow in his Commodities Hour. I just wanted to get to this because it's something we followed only because I, I follow all the charts, uh, anything that moves. And the corn, C-O-R-N, the Tukrium Tukrium Corn Fund is at 49.98. It extended to leg G. That could even turn out to be a C, and then you go to a D, just above 50, 70. Everything about it says that it should start to to have limited upside and start testing the downside, and that would be the 47.10 area. But we're talking about such an unusual occurrence. So I, d- I needed to do that. And now I think I'm ready. Apple was the question. I thought I just did Apple in the previous hour. You know, I've been so busy all day. No, I haven't. Apple made, oh, maybe I did. Apple made a 644 round number top. Yes, I did. And then what we were looking at is that I said if it closes above the round number 618 bounce that it had in failure back on the 25th of, that's two months ago, right? Three months ago. Uh, back on April the 25th, um, where it had a 606 round number, a 618 round number high, and a 606 was the low, and it closed at 610 round number. Those round numbers were devastating. That tells me just people were exiting, exiting, exiting in round numbers just to get out of the stock. And then it plunged down to 522. Now it's taking this time, but it's gotten back to the recent high of 619.87. It hasn't been able to close above 618. If it closes above 618, it certainly can go higher. I just don't think it's going to do that. I think it's got the pattern, the dreaded H, and there's a very good chance over the next six weeks that not only does it test the 540, uh, 528.66 level, the low of the 18th of May, but it's going to take that out, and then that major uptrend and up channel uh, re- resistance that be- will be- have to become support, and that support's going to be somewhere around... 512 or something. So I, I see Apple just having a good digestive period. It's an incredible stock, one of the finest stocks, one of the finest companies. Hey, needs a break, that's all. So I needed to get to that. Oh, and Panera, here we go. Now, Panera um, is trading at 153.40, up 11.49. When it was trading back in the 143s the other day, and we had a, I had a call, uh, Mike from Long Island, I said to him, that I don't believe that Panera is is going to turn around and have another big move to the upside because I think it had made what I call a, a potential hat trick top at the 165.99 high of uh, of March, a peak e in, in the um, a peak e in the monthly chart, but in an up channel that says that it could test the up channel resistance. The MACD is not. Positive. So the statistics at seventy six percent, but the month isn't finished. So I do have to wait for the month to finish. So let me say this: the MACD and stochastic. There was a positive divergence in the um, stochastic and the price on the last low, but Panera Bread (PNRA) is trading at one fifty three thirty nine. Everything about this says to me that it could go a little higher, but there's a good chance that based on, actually, I want to do a little work because I do a lot of work on the 120 minute in this potential flag formation and I'll explain what I'm looking at I'll be right back, Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pazaventa, we are looking at Panera Bread and uh, the Dow's up 30, S&P's down 330 Real mixed market Selective Longs, that's all Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations, including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. 
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of this opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We are back, and we've got, uh, let's see, we've got the Dow 38, S&P's up down two and a half, and we've got Michael online. Hi, Michael. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, Very well. Thank you. By the way, I think uh, Kramer uh, interviewed... Uh, the Panera CEO from uh, he was at at Newton Newton Massachusetts. Yeah, he, he uh, and Newton because he uh, I think he lives in Brookline actually, and he he's uh, sure I can't remember what his name is something like that, right? Sage uh, Sage, I think his name. Is. What's his name? Sage Sage. Ah, that's right. Yes, and uh, I mean that just a fantastic job, and actually I always enjoy eating there, just having a quick meal. I love Panera, and um, but. I think everything I'm looking at says maybe you need a little patience, but if Panera starts to get to the 147, 145 area in the next, the quicker it gets there in the next two days or so, that'll say great. Now you know that the upside is very limited and probably it's going to start making lower highs and lower lows. If it breaks out and starts to go to the 156, 157, they have a plan that is just amazing. Maybe that's the reason, you know, that they're keeping everything in check. I. Uh, the monthly chart says it's holding okay, but uh, there are signs of weakness there. So I, my, my bias is to be looking not to buy this, but to short it, and that's the yeah. way my part. So, but you want I, to? I, I, I think they're going to feel the heat, just like you know the whole sector will. They have to, right? I don't see how they, they can avoid it. You know, they just they just don't know it yet, but I think they'll be taking their next quarter earnings down. So we'll, we'll right, find out in the next but, 60 but think, days. 
Correct, but thinking it through and knowing the trade are two separate things. So I would not allow it to get away on the upside. If one was short, I would absolutely put a stop. You can always come back in on the short side. But if this start, if it takes out this candle and goes underneath today's low of 149.56, the quicker it does that, then the more likely, like Caterpillar today, spikes up huge, goes all the way to 85, what was it? 85.45, and... Trading right now at 80.83 with a low of 82.23. This is, that's huge. That's what's a seven and a half, that's an 8% uh, uh, turnaround. So, and, and the monthly chart, it couldn't even get above the nine period exponential moving average, and it has that Groucho Marx eyebrows double top um, in the monthly chart. So, uh, yeah, you just got to be a little careful here, but that's my thinking. But you wanted to look at? Yeah, Las Vegas Sands, they report today after the close. Oh um, really? Yeah. Do you, do you, you had a position in this on the short side? Do you still have it? Yeah, it's also something that you know it's not not a group, big position, but I would add to it. Given the uh, you know look at win and uh, I mean look at what's going on there. It's it's not pretty. It ain't pretty. And you know what's so fascinating about these stocks when they are moving higher, it's like they are those ice cutters in the Arctic, nothing yeah. stops them. They just go, and they go, and they go. Then when they turn around, it's as if the engine has no clue that the rudder is turned because it goes at the same speed, but to the downside. So LVS is Las Vegas Sands, trading at 37.56, down 83. Folks, this is a pattern in my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology. I talk about this a lot. But what's interesting is it has a beautiful left side, right side price time match from the low of uh, 40.03 December. This is the weekly chart, December the 16th, 2011. It goes to peak A, B, C, D, E to 62.09, April of April 13th, week of April the 13th of this year. And then it plummets down in the same time frame. And in fact, I had shown this chart at some point as an experiment. I think I even showed subscribers this just as an experiment to show how potent the left side, right side price time matches if you're able to correctly identify which candle is the plumb line in the middle. And this, I gave it as a, a low of 40.03 back on the on on 15th of December 2011 and I made the midpoint in this particular instance a particular candle on the 29th of March and I put in the red so that was all green and even though it went higher and it made a, t a particular sell signal with what I call the silent round number it's a t particular technique that I show subscribers uh, and it made it just before it, made, it went to 6209 high now it's come down and what did it do to the day, it went on the 12th of July, it broke that low, it went to 39.11. So that tells me if it breaks it in the same, in that equal time frame, and then tries to bounce and then breaks below it, now it tells you very clearly that the level of the resistance is uh, 40.03, not far away, it's a 37.58. But if it's not, able to hold above 40, let's call it 40, let's call it 40.50, just to be safe. If it closes above 40.50, three out of the next five sessions after the earnings report, then it could have a bounce, and that would be a great bounce to consider re rethinking uh, possibly the short side, but I would be a little careful thinking long on this one, because the monthly chart is very powerfully to the downside, and if it takes out 36.20, the low of October of 2011, there's very little support. There's just very little support. So, let's see what the earnings does. If it has a big pop-up, I would say that level that it hit before, maybe it fills the gap, maybe it even gets to the previous high, 42.36. At that point, let's see how the uh, technicals are holding in the daily or the weekly, but congratulations on a great trade. It's going to be very interesting because the way it goes straight up and straight down, I'm going right. to monitor it to see if we don't actually get a mark uh, 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 price turn here that says, hey, be careful now on the short side because I'm ready to start... You remember the engine goes full speed, but the rudder yep. turns? 
I'm ready to just tackle the 4279 period exponential moving average on the weekly chart. So that's the only thing I say to you. Let's see how it handles it. And tomorrow early in the morning, uh, you will know very clearly whether or not you're right in staying on the short side or whether it's worth taking a little bit off money you could put back on if it, if it fails between 41 and 43 in the next three weeks on any counter trend rally. Hope that helps you. All right, great. All right, thank, thank you, you very much for always enjoy your calls. Thank you very much. Let's go to uh, Charlie in Atlanta. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Fine. How about yourself, Basil? Very well, thank you. What can I help you with? I'm calling about SPY and SBS, but you know something that looking, I'm looking at. I did a one-year comparison between the last year between SPY and Apple. Oh, okay. Can you speak a little louder? I'm having trouble hearing you. Yeah, my cell phone all of a sudden, uh, I think, is uh, it's an interference. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Well, you just keep going, and I, I'm listening. Anyway, yeah. Uh, oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? My, my engineer asked if it would be possible. Would you be able to call back um, yeah. so that I can get a clearer, clearer sound? Yeah, let me call it back. And I'm going to start talking about it in the meantime, okay? So call me right back. Charlie's calling back, and the question was spy, and he was talking about spy and Apple. I'd like to hear that, but it was a little fuzzy, and we'd like to have as much clarity as possible. That's why we got this fantastic, uh, uh, we got a fantastic engineer and fantastic equipment that we use for these conversations. So we've got the spy trading at 133.74. It's down 17 cents. The 200 period exponential moving average at 132.40 is. I'm oh, back. you're back. Oh, I can hear you better. Good. Yes. So, all right. So, tell me your tell me your thinking. My thinking was in the last year, Apple went up a lot, and the SPY was going up a lot, and we kept hearing that. Well, the reason SPY is going up is because Apple is going up a lot. But now, on a day when Apple goes down a lot, I only see SPY dropping one tenth of a point. Right. And I'm long SDS, and I was expecting more from SDS. But something in that relationship isn't working today. Well, it's actually more the Qs because Nasdaq has such, such a big weighting in the Qs. So the, comp, the comparable, comparable aspect would be to go to the NDX 100 or the Qs. If you look at the, the QQQ power shares, uh, trust series, they are, they are not doing that well. They are down 0.67%. Uh, down 42 cents, and they've broken under the up-channel support. They've made a peak e-top in the uh, weekly chart of the, of the uh, in the Chapman wave, and the and the, so the daily chart and the weekly chart has gone to a peak B with a double top at 65.25 and 65.35. So that's a C. So a number of these charts have gone to a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C. I'm always a bit cautious there, and I'll explain something. So you, your question really is the relationship of Apple. Now, I'm going to say to you, you, at this point, I think you have to exclude any, any real relationship, and the relationship will just be that Apple will affect and effect any price change to the Qs because of its weighting. That might change over a period of months, but so far it's still a very large. I don't have the percentage in front of me, but I know it's very big. That's number one. Number two is, at this particular point, I have to, I have to try as much as possible. I know in my own thinking, thinking I've done it for a while now. I've excluded Apple from my thinking of the market, and Apple right now is down twenty-seven at five seventy-three, having made a rare peak G. In, it's called a smooth peak G in the Chapman wave, where it goes to a peak F, and then within three bars, it quickly goes to a G. It looks like an extension of that F. This, in this case, it went to six nineteen point eighty-seven, and then it pulled back very sharply to today's low of five seventy, round number five seventy, and a high of five eighty point eighty. So for me, it's very easy. If Apple closes in the next day to if it even trades under 570, there's a real good chance that it's going to test the low of 565.61. That will impact the Qs. Now, the S, you asked about the SDS. The SDS is the 200% short. You trade it on the long side, but it's made up of being short 200% the SPY. It's trading at 16.11. It made a low a doji low, a new low, a new, uh, you can't call it a recovery low, it's made a new low um, at 1512, 
just a few days ago, and, and, and this is peak A if it doesn't make a new high today. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, regardless of what Apple does, if the volatility index, and I like to keep it as simple as possible, if the VIX is under 20, and right now it's at 19.92, so it allows a little bit of room to rally, but if the volatility index starts to slide under 19, we will get a very nice market rally in the Dow, the SPY, and the Qs will move, even though for a little while now, I think Apple is going to be a drag on the Qs. So you see what I'm doing with my relationship? I'm saying the relationship is with the, the QQQ Trust Series. Not it, it, Apple is part of, this, of the S&P, but it's really a much smaller fraction than it is of the Qs. And at the same time, I'm saying to you, try to separate the two. Don't listen to what everybody says. Think of Apple now as needing a, di a digestive period. Make it as easy as you can. The volatility index got repelled uh, from 20.99 20 yesterday is the 200-period moving average. It went to 21, uh, one cent higher, and then it got repelled for, for peak A. If the, the VIX starts to pull back, there could be a very nice little rally here. If the EUR USD is trying to make a turn, this is the moment it has to do it. A lot of things are in place, and TLT is pulling back, could pull back, the dollar's pulling back. This is the moment that there could be a bounce in the market that could last into Friday or even into Monday. But a lot depends on exactly what we're looking at. If that volatility index starts to get back into the 20s, that's going to be a, a, a negative thing. And at this particular point, I would say to you, maybe you should ignore Apple as a market indicator just in terms of the indexes. But I can tell you this, that if Apple starts to fall, it will drag the queues down or it will be... Uh, it will take away from any particular percentage rally on the upside by having such a big weight in the queues. I hope that answers part of your question. Oh, it did. Thank you very much. So thank you. That, that relationship was there to a certain extent, but more to the queues than the, than, the, than, the, than the spy. So that's really what I wanted to get across. So thank you very much for calling. I do, and thanks for calling back. It was much clearer that time. It was Charlie in Atlanta. Okay, now, there were, there were other questions that I had. I just need to go back here to check. There was one question. Somewhere in there, there was a question as to um, uh, the crude oil. And I'm not sure which contract is trading, uh, the one that people trade the most. I'm going to the N. Can't go to N, that's ridiculous. Go to uh, Q, let's go to Q. Okay, the Q contract, which is the uh, is September, August. The August contract trading right now, the Qs are, the CLQ, that is crude oil, is trading at 91.56. Ugh, did I have that? No, that can't be right. Is that what people are trading? Um, I, I need to just double check on that. Let me just CLU. I thought I had this down. CLU. Ah! CLU, okay. The CLU is the uh, September contract, and it's trading right now at 87.23, down a dollar 27. It went to peak C, and then it pulled back. Now, I want you to talk about relationships. If you are looking at crude oil, and I'm going to show this now, CL. I have to go to the C, I believe it is. Yeah, this is a contract that is really worth looking at. If you look at the contract that went all the way to 194.92, Back, this is the continuous contract, back in July of 2008, whatever that high, I think it was 150 on that contract. We'll look at this in relation to what might happen to crude oil coming up. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento, 877 if you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. 
Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to archives of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman. Of course, I've done so many charts in the time during the break that I don't even remember which chart I was looking at before when we went to a break. However, let's just do this. There, there was a, a comments made about Spain in the den. If you look at the EWP, which is the iShares Spain Index Fund, it made a beautiful, from the low that it started off at 1471, back in October of 2002, it went peak A, B, C, D, E. Then it recycled to a brand new buy mode, based on the 9 period moving average and the MACD and stochastic, to a brand new A, B, C, D, E. Well, it made that final top in November of 2007 at 7185, having gone from, what did I say it was, 14, yeah, 14, from the 1470s, uh, that's a spectacular move. And then it turns around, it comes down sharply, it goes to a low of 24.33. Well, you know what? It goes up, it makes a peak A a minus in a failure pattern. Remember the patterns that repeat over and over again? Larry, this is a show that's called, uh, uh, you know, identifying how to trade the chart pattern. And in Larry's case, you trade what you see, and in this particular instance, I'm looking at an A that becomes an A failure that turns out to give you that arch formation that I call the dreaded H, like a lowercase H. It's all it looks like is like a lowercase H. You come down, and then you make your arch formation right there. Okay? And then you can repeat that. If you, ba if you hold the bottom, 
You can do it again, and that becomes an M pattern, a repeated M pattern. When that breaks down, two things happen. It depends on the speed, but if the technicals are ready to turn up sharply, they can give you a move that takes you all the way back to the previous arch. But if you close below it decisively, especially if you close two out of three bars, in this case this is the third month, they could perhaps close below, then you've got to be very, very careful. Why? Because there are no signs yet of a turnaround. We've just broken the low of um, March of 2009, 24.33. You broke it last week. And most importantly, the 9 period exponential moving average at 26.95 is very strong resistance. So what I'm looking at here is the weekly is showing a little bit of a positive divergence. It's a candle. It's going to, a lot depends if, if Spain, the EWP, cracks the 20 support and goes into the 19.30 area. All of a sudden, this little mini left side, right side price time matching the daily that you've got says, uh oh, instead of going underneath and bouncing back in to say goodbye to your friends that you didn't have a chance to above um, 20.98, the low of the 1st of June in this little arch formation in the daily chart if you're looking at my charts. If you continue lower, it makes the resistance level so much harder to get to, in this case, 2140 on the daily. So we, we, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, be careful, be careful. Things are happening here in the, worldwide that says, you know what, selectively long if you're long. Put in tight stops, but on the, short, on the downside, there are many sectors that are breaking down. Thank you for being here, and stay tuned for Daryl, Daryl Martin coming up, Diagnostic Training, fabulous show, and I will be back on, when will I be back? I'll be back on Friday.